to Who Are You? Today we're going to start a new series of the Who Are You? series. We're going to be starting um, looking at what is faith. Um, we'll look at some examples of faith through people in the Bible and find out if we are like them, if we can be like them, if we want to be like them, discover who we are, examine ourselves, see who we are, who we want to be in our faith. And we'll look at some examples of those who don't have so much faith. Um, today in this video, though, I'm going to take the time to discuss with you um, of what faith is. What is faith? You know, we have in our U program at our church, um, and they have a definition of faith, and their definition of faith is, faith is a personal measurement of the level of confidence in what Christ has done and will do through and for us. So it's a personal me me uh, measurement of the level of confidence in what Christ has done and what he's going to do. So if you picture it like a 12 inch ruler. Now this isn't a 12 inch ruler, this is a 6 inch ruler, but I don't have a 12 inch ruler. But faith is like a 12 inch ruler. And if you can picture it divided into uh, four three inch sections, okay? If you have ever come to God when faced with adversity, when you're in trouble, then your faith is at a three inch. So it's one fourth of the faith um, that you can have. However, if we believe in God, if we're saved, then that faith becomes six inches of faith. So it's half of the ruler. If we believe that he rewards diligent seekers, then our faith becomes nine, three-fourths of the faith that we have. And if your faith is willing to diligently seek him, that's when our faith becomes 12 inches. So just believing in God, or coming to God without belief, is a little bit of faith, because it's at least showing some faith that there is a God. And, and how many people do that in the world when they're in trouble, they come to God, and that's the only time they come. But they're showing some faith. Now, if you come to God, and you actually believe in Him and what He's done, that gives you your, your uh, six-inch faith. And when we come to God, when we believe in God, and we believe that He rewards those who seek Him, that gives us our nine. But when we ourselves are the ones who are diligently seeking Him and going to Him, that's when our faith becomes 12. So that's the RU uh, definition of faith is uh, personal measurement of the level of confidence in what Christ has done, will, and for us. So what is, what is faith? Faith is trust or assurance and confidence in God. Living faith is shown by service and obedience to God. God will increase our faith when we fervently ask and draw close to Him. You might have heard the expression, just have faith, it'll work out. It's used by people to encourage and comfort someone facing serious problems or stressful situations. But just what is faith as described in the Bible and what does it really work? So the New Testament word, the New Testament word for the English word faith is used to translate the Greek word pistis. The New Strong's Expanded Dictionary of Bible Words says pistis is used of belief with the idea that trust or confidence, whether in God or in Christ, springing from faith, in the same faith means trust, confidence, assurance, and belief. So the Bible also defines pistis in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. Here's what it says. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's Hebrews 11 and 1. So faith is the substance or assurance for things that we hope for but we haven't received yet. Or haven't seen. Faith, 
confidence, belief, trust, is also our evidence of that which is not seen, the invisible spiritual things. Um, faith comes before a prayer is answered or before an individual has received what he or she is requesting from God. If we have received what we have asked for, then faith is not needed. So faith is something that measures what we don't see. Uh, we don't see the wind, but we have faith that it's there. Um, we do see, see things. Uh, we see the trees blowing that shows examples of that just as we can see God moving in people's lives. So what is faith? A New Testament example. We're going to go New Testament for this example here. And we're going to look at Matthew chapter 9, verse 27 through 30. And here we're going to see two blind men come to Jesus and ask him to heal them. And let's take a look at what happens. So Matthew 9, 27 through 30. And when Jesus departed henceforth, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him and said, And Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this. And they said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man knows it. So their faith and assurance that Jesus could give them uh, sight was the substance or reality that they have hoped for. It also gave them the evidence or trust that they would receive what they have asked for. They believed that it um, would be done. They had faith in advance that it would be done. Do we have that faith in Jesus and the things we ask for? When we go to God and we go to Jesus in prayer, do we have that faith that he is going to answer us? And he does answer us, friends, one way or another. Um, it's either a yes and he gives it to us, it's a no because he knows what's best for us, or it's a wait. So it's one of those things. Now's not the time. So how about an Old Testament example? Another example is in the Old Testament, and that's of Daniel's three friends, and we went over this in a few, uh, a couple of videos again ago when we looked at Daniel and the things that we can learn from his life. Uh, we've seen these three friends of him, and we're talking about Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Okay, so we're going to look at these examples um, of these three friends who refused to bow down to King Nebuchadnezzar's image of gold. Those who refused to bow were threatened with being thrown into the fiery pit alive or the fiery furnace. Um, so this is what they told uh, Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 3 in verses 17 and 18. chapter 3 verse 17 and 18 if it be so our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand O king but if not be it known unto thee O king that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up so we see they did not know in advance how God would deliver them from the fiery furnace whether at that time by saving their physical lives or later in the resur resurrection their faith or trust was the substance of what they hoped for and hoped is a uh, confident expectation it was the evidence of that which they have not seen or received their faith or trust was built on serving God and obeying his commandments they believed God would deliver them because they obeyed his commandments and did not bow down and worship any other gods. So they knew what was going to happen. They, they uh, said in verse 17, 
Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. So he is able to, and he will. I would say that was pretty much faith, that was confidence. Um, they knew what their God would do, and that's the same God we serve. So we want to move on to talking about, a lot of people think, about works and things like that. Faith without works is dead. The Apostle James, uh, who was the half-brother of Jesus, he wrote in his epistle about what he called dead faith. Uh, dead faith is when one believes in God but does not carry out his commandments. So James wrote in chapter 2 and verse 19 and 20, James 2, 19 and 20. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? So faith without works is dead. James went on to use the example of Abraham, uh, who had both faith and works because he believed God, and he obeyed what God commanded him to do. So, as we, uh, the next two verses, 21 and 22. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he hath ordered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works, was faith made perfect. So, real faith is more than just believing in God alone, friends. Um, it includes acting on that faith in one's life uh, by serving God and obeying His commandments. Faith is increased by drawing closer to God uh, through prayer and the study of His Word, the Bible. Um, some may argue that James' teaching that we should obey the commandments of God is teaching that we are saved by works, and that's not the case. Um, the Apostle Paul makes this clear when he says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not works, lest any man should boast. And that's Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Paul clearly understood and wrote that no one could earn salvation by faith. No one could. Itself is a gift from God. Yet in the very next verse, he went on to say that we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, with which God hath prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And that's verse 10. Um, like James, Paul knew living faith would be accompanied by service and obedience to God and his laws. Paul wrote in Romans uh, chapter 3 and verse 31, do we make... Well, let me turn here so I don't misquote this. So we're going to go Romans chapter 3 and verse 31. Romans 3 and 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. And what about God gives faith to those who seek it. God gives faith to those who seek it. So faith is increased by drawing closer to God through prayer and the study of the Bible. Paul told the Philippians to be anxious for nothing or don't worry, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That's Philippians 4, uh, 6 and 7. They believed God's word, and they obeyed his commandments, as they listened and followed to Paul's instructions on giving their uh, cares to God and believing in, in prayer. Their faith was increased. Another way faith is increased is by reading or hearing examples of faith in the Bible publicly um, expounded. This means 
in Romans 10, 7, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The word of God is what brings us more faith. Today we have the complete word of God in many different languages and in tongues. Um, the Bible is God's inspired word to mankind. It's his love letter. When we read the Bible, our faith in God and Jesus to answer our prayers and to bring us through impossible situations increases and strengthens. So what is faith to summarize? Faith is trust, assurance, and confidence in God and Jesus Christ. Living faith is not just believing that God exists. It is demonstrated by one's service and obedience to God. God will increase our faith if we fervently ask Him and seek to draw closer to Him in prayer and reading His Word. So thank you for tuning into this. I hope this helped you to understand a little bit of what faith is. And in the next videos, we'll go through some examples. Um, we'll talk in more depth about people like Abraham and um, others who, who have put their, their faith, complete trust in God and, and followed the things that he said. Uh, we've seen a little bit of that in the last video when we were talking about Cain and Abel, the things we can learn from uh, Abel's faith as well. We'll discuss that a little bit more. Now I want to thank you for joining um, and watching this video. Uh, hit that notification button, subscribe, leave your comments. Um, I know I talked to some people personally and they wanted to talk about faith, so um, that's why I decided to do this. Leave your comments below of what you think, what you'd like to hear next. Um, let's get a discussion going. Um, I would love to talk to you guys. Thanks again for tuning in. God bless. And remember to ask yourself, who are you in Christ?